Hi, I'm Kent. In this video, we're going to continue working on my lamp. So I have a series of videos where I've been trying to turn this form here, which is a sphere that I've made, into a lamp. And the challenge I've been working on in particular is how to get these holes. I've used punches, I've used drill bits, and most recently I've been trying to cast the holes into the pots. And the challenge really is trying to get the hole that's clean on the inside in this form that's basically inaccessible. So the problem is all the holes break out on the inside when I go and punch them through. Unfortunately, it's hard to get a really good shot of that, but hopefully you get the idea. And as I mentioned, I think this is pretty much due to my clay body and it's just not being plastic enough. Basically when I punch through, it winds up tearing out on the inside. So I wondered if I could actually go ahead and slip cast the holes into my pots themselves. And so I have this test piece I've been doing, it's starting to look like Swiss cheese, where I have a bunch of different holes in it, and I've tried a bunch of different things inside to try and cast the holes. I tried some nails to start with, and the slip stuck to those. I was doing some experiments with wax and found that the slip ran off the wax. And so what I did was I made some pins. I took some of this hobby wire and cut a bunch of pins, and then I soaked these in wax. I basically coated them in molten wax, hoping that the slip would run off of these. And that was my last video. It didn't quite work as expected. I think part of it is the wire is smooth, so getting the wax to adhere is not that great. There were suggestions of using other materials that would hold onto the wax better, and I totally agree those would probably be good. Something like wood would probably be good. However, I really don't like the idea of applying a coating. I worry that it might rub off and then I'd have to reapply it. There are a couple of other suggestions for other materials. One was silicone. I think the hard part there is I couldn't find anything that was basically the right diameter to start with and I'd have to make it myself. So I could make a mold and then go ahead and pour it. One of the challenges with this form though is that there's on the order of 200 holes here, give or take. So I'd need to cast a lot of silicone plugs to try that out. The other suggestion that I really liked was PTFE or Teflon plastic rod. And I think that would work really well. Everyone knows that Teflon is very nonstick. The problem there is cost. Again, I need 200 of these and I was pricing it out and it would actually be relatively expensive to get enough Teflon. Finding the right diameter was also another trick, but I think I could solve that problem. It would just take a little bit longer to get. The last suggestion was to actually use wax itself. And that's what I'm gonna try in this video and hopefully that will work reasonably well. So I went and got these wax rods here. I think these are intended for jewelry making, used to make sprues and things like that. They are advertised as being three millimeters in diameter. And I got confused in the last video. I thought I was using three millimeters and I was actually using four, but we'll go with three in this video. So these are three millimeters in diameter. Unfortunately, when I measured them, they actually aren't three. They're slightly bigger than three millimeters. So I think that's one of the problems with some of these suggestions as well for alternative materials. It's basically getting something where the tolerance is really good. Since I'm drilling a hole and I don't want slip to leak out, I need something that's relatively consistent in size. The wire's pretty good at that. Other things maybe less so. The other nice thing is the wax is very, very cheap, and so I can go ahead and make a bunch of these, and it's relatively easy to work with. Hopefully what will happen in this video is I'll be able to put the wax through, and then when I drain the pot, the slip will drip off of the wax like it did a couple videos ago. So as I mentioned, this poor mold is starting to look like Swiss cheese. It's got a couple of holes that are too big since I am now doing three millimeters instead of four, just because that's what I got. And there's a couple of holes from the nails, and so I'm going to go ahead and drill these out so the right size. I'll just plug these so that the slip doesn't come out. So go ahead and put some holes in. Use these as pilots. Okay, there we go. We have a bunch of holes. One of the problems is I'm getting a little bit of chip out on the inside. I think I need to be a little bit more careful when I drill these, but it won't matter if I can't get the hole on the inside of the pot to work out. And I'll get all the plaster dust out. All right, so I got a couple of pieces of wire I'm going to put into the bigger holes just to block them. And then I have the wax. And I'm just going to cut it into short lengths. Cuts super easy. I'll put that into the holes. I don't have a drill bit exactly the right size. This diameter is unknown. All right, there we go. They're all sticking through. And I got something to grab on the outside. So we'll go ahead and fill this up with slip again. All right, I'll go ahead and let the pot set up and we'll check it out. 
right, the walls have set up. Now for the moment of truth. Let's dump it out. All right, there we go. We've got a little bit of buildup, but it's not very much. I'm gonna turn this upside down and maybe shake it a little bit and get it to drain. I forgot to show it on camera, but I went ahead and pulled the pins basically right away. And here are the results. So let's go ahead and trim it and demold it. All right, so we got some artifacts from the slip draining. Not sure exactly what that is, but the holes are looking so-so. All right, so there's a close-up. So we got a few little bits of clay on here, but I think these are getting pretty good. I'm thinking I'm not gonna be able to do much better than this. So let's go ahead and reset and scale up. I'm not quite ready to put holes in my sphere mold yet. However, I have this piece here. This is one of my old prototypes. It had some problems with the geometry of the foot and I only have the bottom half at this point. But I think this will be a great piece to go ahead and test on. So I can basically go and punch a bunch of holes in here and we can see how it works. The one thing I do wanna do is drill from the inside out. Occasionally when I'm drilling, I'm getting some breakout and that happens, it'll be on the outside of the mold, not the inside. Get a piece of wood to drill on. So I'm not putting holes in my bench. Yeah. So that's what I mean by the, the blowout, chipping out, but on the outside, no big deal. All right, we'll just do this a bunch. Already lots of plaster dust. Let me put something down to capture that. And there we go, a whole bunch of holes. I think that's probably pretty similar. All right, let me go ahead and clean up all the plaster mess and we can try it out. Okay, I just blew off all the dust and then I gave it a quick rinse to try and get all the plaster. And it's looking pretty good. Definitely want to drill from the inside out because it's basically chipped out everywhere. And a few places I went too deep and so the part of the drill that holds onto the drill bit went ahead and made some marks. So I'm glad I was practicing. I'll definitely need to be more careful next time. It's a very repetitive task, so it's hard to keep vigilance for a long time. All right, then just like before, make a whole bunch of pins. And stick them in. They need to be a little bit longer than that. You see it's cut very, very easily. Some of these are looking a little loose. So I think there's two problems. One is this wax is not a consistent thickness. And then finally, the angle, they want to fall down. Okay, this is a little bit of a game of whack-a-mole. The tolerances are definitely all off. All right, let's see if that helps. That's pretty crazy. I didn't want the packing tape secure against the mold because then I wouldn't have pieces of wax to pull out against, but I don't know there's many other options at this point. The crazy things we do for art. All right, let's see if I can go ahead and get this filled up with slip before everything moves.
My other concern is that because the tolerances are so loose, the slip's going to leak out of the holes. So we'll see about that. So far, so good. Since it's only half a mold, I don't have a slip well. So we'll just fill it up as far as we can. All right, I'll go ahead and let that sit. And we'll check back when it's time to dump out the slip. All right, let's see if we can dump it out without losing all of the wax pins. I see slip draining off a lot of the pins. That's a good sign. All right, so far that's looking very promising. Let me go ahead and flip this upside down and let it drain the rest of the way. Actually, I was getting ahead of myself. I want to go ahead and pull all the pins, which means I need to remove the tape. And this is what I was afraid of. Some of them are buried because the tape pushed them in. And I'm pretending I can't get to the inside like it'll be my final form. But I don't think that's going to work. All right, I think that's all the ones I can grab. Several people have asked about pulling them from the inside. Normally I can't do that, but now I can. And it's pulling away from the walls a little bit, but the holes are nice and clean. I am deforming the pot with no support by pulling them. This means it would be warped when I finally fire it as I'm disrupting the clay particles. So pulling from the inside, while a good idea, is not the magical solution either. And I can't wait till it sets longer because it'll constrict around the pins. The clay will shrink. All right, let me take a quick look and see if I got them all. They were definitely worse for wear for pulling the pins from the inside. All right, this is still super soft, so I'm going to go ahead and let it dry. I think I'm going to let it dry right side up. All the slips drained out at this point. This is set up and it should be able to be demolded. However, the most interesting thing is actually this side right here, which is normally on the inside. Overall, most of the holes look pretty good. We still have this warping from pulling the pins out from the inside, but I wouldn't plan on doing that. And it seems like the slip, even when it built up, seemed to not create too many mounds. There's a few artifacts. Again, like this is really going to be the inside. I really just want something that's pretty good. It doesn't need to be absolutely perfect. If I were to make a bowl, I could, you know, clean this out or something like that. And then there's a few holes that didn't make it all the way through. So I guess the pin wasn't stuck in far enough. Let's just go ahead and flip it over. I like using a piece of cardboard to catch it. Oh, I see what happened. So there is slip that leaked into the holes that were larger, and I'm thinking they got stuck, and that's why it deformed. So yeah, issues with tolerance for sure. So I think I'm getting pretty close. I think the wax pins work pretty well in terms of shedding the slip away so it doesn't build up. I think the inside surface finish is looking pretty good. I don't think it's ever gonna be perfect, but it should be good enough. The wax was definitely cheap and easy to cut, so that was good, but the tolerances are definitely a problem. The fact that they weren't exactly three millimeters and I had to use a bigger hole to actually fit them in was a problem. That meant that they were falling out, so the packing tape was definitely a hack. And then there was slip that actually got into the holes as well. So we had a bunch of artifacts on the outside surface. I'm pretty confident this could be cleaned up with a sponge once it's a little bit firmer, but I'd rather not have to deal with that. So I think overall we have a process that works. I just need to go ahead and find the right materials. I do really like the idea of using PTFE or Teflon rods. I think the problem is that they'd just be really expensive, as I mentioned. Maybe there's some other plastics that would work as well. I was looking around at basically cutting more material, so the ultra high weight molecular density or something like that plastics, and I couldn't find any rods that were the right size. Most things are much bigger, so I guess they're meant for turning down on a lathe. 
these relatively small sizes seem much more rare. So this has definitely been an interesting journey. I think I'm basically going to pause it at this point. I think I need to do a little bit more material searching and that may take a while. I also would like to try and get a couple of these all the way to the finish line. So basically go ahead and let them dry out, mist them, glaze them, and go ahead and do my rice grain effect on them as well. That way I could get a better sense of what the overall process would look like. However, I just did a fire ring not too long ago and my shelves behind me are empty. There's no greenware or bisqueware on it. So it'll actually probably be quite a while before I get a chance to go ahead and do that. In the meantime, I think I'm probably gonna switch back into design mode and try a few more forms. Thanks again for all the help and suggestions. And if you have any questions or comments, let me know, thanks.